with 10 kids and a really busy schedule, getting dinner on the table every single night can be a challenge, but I've got some tricks for it. And one of them is canning convenience meals, like this white chicken chili. You'll be surprised how easy it is, and then you'll have your own meals on the shelf ready to heat and eat. All right, well, we're gonna jump right in today. And because this is a meal that has beans and meat in it, it is a low acid meal, which means that we have to can this in the pressure canner. Now, if you don't know what that means, check out the link in the description for my free video series where I teach you all about safely canning different types of food. But, for now, we're gonna to have to use the pressure canner. So the first step to any pressure canning recipe is to prep your jars, your lids, and your canner. So back here, I have my pressure canner. It's nice and clean. And I filled it to right about here, about two inches filled with warm water. Now I've taken my jars, I've washed them with hot soapy water, so they're very clean. I've checked them to make sure that they don't have any nicks or chips on the rim. And I've filled them with just a little bit of warm water so that I can set them into the canner to keep them warm. Now I've also washed my rings and my lids in hot soapy water, but they can just sit out on the counter and wait for me to can. Always make sure that you have a rack at the bottom of any canner that you're using when you're putting jars in it. That way you don't have any broken jars. All right, now we're gonna cover this up and it's all ready to turn on as soon as we get close to canning. All right, step number two when we're pressure canning is to prepare our preserve, the food that's gonna go inside of the, um, the jars. And in this case, we're doing this wonderful white chicken chili. It's gonna be so amazing. So yesterday I took two and a half cups of great northern beans and I soaked them overnight so that they can get rid of all that phytic acid and they can swell up to their full potential. Now, I have them covered in water, but whenever we're canning beans, we need to bring them up to a boil and then let them simmer for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna do that right now before I move on to the next steps. All right, the beans have been simmering for about 30 minutes now and they've started to get soft, but they're definitely not cooked all the way. And in that amount of time, I've been prepping the rest of my ingredients. So I have about six cups of chicken here that's uh, boneless, skinless, and been cut into about one inch cubes. You can use a mixture of light and dark meat for that. I have one onion chopped up, a little bit of olive oil, some cumin, cayenne, some oregano, five cloves of garlic minced, and one cup of Ortega chilies, and I'm using the mild today. I also have about 10 cups of chicken broth. Now, if you want the exact written recipe for this, check the link in the description to go over to the blog post where you can get a printable version of the recipe. All right, now we wanna have all your ingredients prepped and ready because once this gets going, it goes pretty quickly. We're gonna start by heating up our stock pot. All right, we're gonna start by putting our olive oil into the bottom of our stock pot. You're gonna want a nice big pot because we're gonna make the full chili right now. And then we're gonna take our chicken and put it all right in there, stir it around and coat it all the way with that oil, make sure it's all coated. And then we're gonna let it cook for about 10 minutes or until it's starting to get done. It doesn't have to be all the way done because remember, we are gonna pressure can this. Stir it occasionally. Okay, so the chicken's been cooking for about 10 minutes now and it's time to add a bunch of the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna put the onions in. the garlic, and the seasonings and spices. A 
We're just gonna mix that in well and allow that to cook for just about five minutes before we add the rest of the ingredients. All right, now we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Now I've drained the beans mostly, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour those all the way in. And we're gonna add the 10 cups of chicken broth. Now, if you're using homemade chicken broth, make sure you defat it for the best results. Here we go. And we're gonna add those Ortega chilies right in there. Complete with their liquid and all. And we're just gonna give that a quick stir just to mix it all together. Now we're gonna bring this up to a boil and turn it down and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. At this point, we're ready to get our canner warming up to make sure that it's ready by the time we're ready for those jars. So we're just gonna turn this on to a low heat. Now we're not trying to bring this up to a boil. We're just trying to bring it up to just barely simmering. We're technically looking for about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's being pretty technical. Just starting to steam will be fine. All right, we're all ready to start filling our jars. Now I've taken the jars out of the canner and dumped out their water. I don't wanna add any more water to the canner, so I dumped them out in the sink and we're ready to fill up our jars. Now today I'm using quart jars. Um, the trick with this is to make sure that we evenly divide up the solids and the broth into each of these jars. So I'm gonna start by filling each jar about halfway filled with the white chili. Now, this is by no means actually all the way done. Those beans are still a little bit hard and crunchy and that's just what we want. So there's nothing wrong with that. All right, I felt like I could get enough of the solids to fill six jars halfway full. So now I'm gonna top them all off with everything that's remaining here. Now we're looking for a one inch head space. So make sure you leave an inch of space at the top of the jar that's unfilled. All right, now we have them all nicely filled up with that one inch head space. Now we need to make sure we go along the edges and release any bubbles that might be in there so that we can make sure that that head space is correct. Now you can use any sort of plastic or wood tool for this and just poke down the sides in about three to four different places just to make sure there's no hidden bubbles. If you have any significant change in headspace from releasing any bubbles, just add a little more liquid to the top. If you've run out of broth, hot water will do just fine. All right, now we need to clean our rams. Right here I just have a little bit of white distilled vinegar and a very, very clean cloth. And I'm just gonna go around the edges. We wanna make sure to get off any little bits of food, any uh, little crumbs, and any little bits of fat that might have been left on there from that chicken broth. While you're at it, pay attention again to make sure you didn't get any nicks or chips in the rims of your jars. Okay, now we're ready to put the lids on. Now I have brand new fresh lids here and I'm just gonna lay them all out. And we're gonna screw the bands on just finger tight. We don't wanna crank them on. We just wanna get them as tight as your fingers can get them. And be careful, those jars are hot. All right, now the canner should be up to temperature and starting to steam. We're ready to put the jars right on in. All right, let's get our lid on. Make sure you line it up properly. 
and settle it on. And you're going to want to screw your lid on if you have a screw type lid, um, starting by setting up all of your screws at once and then screwing them on opposite screws at the same time. What this does is it allows you to level your lid to make sure it's really on there evenly and sealed down really well. Now that heat's still on about medium high and we're gonna let this vent come up to a full steam. It'll take a few minutes. All right, so the canner has come to a solid steam now and it's been steaming for about 10 minutes, which you always wanna let it do. So it's time to go ahead and put our weight or our jiggler right onto our vent. Now, if you're canning at sea level to a thousand feet, then you're gonna can at 10 pounds of pressure. If you're anything over a thousand feet elevation, then you're gonna wanna check your conversion to see what adjusted pressure you need to can at. Now, for my elevation, I need to can at 15 pounds of pressure. So I'm gonna drop my jiggler on to the 15 pounds mark. All right, now I'm gonna let the canner slowly come up to temperature until my jiggler starts jiggling. All right, now the canner is finally coming up to its full pressure. You can hear we're getting a few jiggles per minute. We're really looking for about four jiggles per minute, just like that. And uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and start our timer. And if you're canning quarts of the white chicken chili, you're gonna wanna let that timer go at full processing temperature for 90 minutes. If you're doing pints, you can go with 75 minutes. Once that's done, we're gonna turn off the canner and let it come down to zero pressure naturally before we take this next step. Once your canner has come all the way down in pressure, go ahead and take your jiggler off and let your canner sit for 10 minutes to allow all the steam to escape. Then you'll be ready to remove the lid from your canner and take your jars out, set them on a counter in a draft-free location. All right, so these jars have been cooling for about 16 hours now and they're entirely cool to the touch. Now, I know they don't look super pretty, but they're gonna taste great um, and we're all ready. So now we're gonna check the seals and we're gonna take the rings off. This is really important to take these off before you put them in storage. As long as you have a good solid seal, you're ready to move on. But if you find one that hasn't sealed properly and the lid pops up or there's some movement in the lid, you're gonna wanna get that into the refrigerator within 24 hours and consume it within the next few days. These are now ready to label, to clean up if there's anything sticky on them, and to go on your shelf so that whenever you need a quick meal, you can pull it off the shelf, dump it in a sauce pot, and just heat it up really fast, and you have a ready-made dinner. Hey, if you want another quick convenience meal that you can can and keep on your shelf, check out this video on canning stew. We'll see you soon.